There are many things you can do as a single that you cannot do in marriage. Marriage is a choice and a calling. For some reason, some people may not have the ability to get married. God may have given someone the special ability to be celibate all their lives. Jesus was dealing with faithfulness in marriage. He spoke about the commitment that comes with marriage and how God frowns on divorce. The Pharisee also came to him, testing him and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for just any reason? And he answered and said to them, Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together, let not man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If such is the case of the man with his wife, it is better not to marry. Being single, God wants you to develop the virtue of respect, love, faithfulness, and commitment to whatever cause you are pursuing as a single. You have to be preparing yourself to stay with someone for the rest of your life. That is if you are going to marry. Jesus asked the Pharisees, have you not read? Jesus expected them to read. People are so much obsessed with relationship itself instead of acquiring knowledge. People perish because of lack of knowledge. Jesus, who was never married, dedicated his whole life to knowing God's will and everything that concerns him and relationship. He was a student of the Father, seeing what the Father is doing and doing likewise. Today, people haven't read how God made men from the beginning. That's why you can see a man and a man doing what is abominable, and woman and woman doing what is abominable, and suffering the consequences of their own doings. Have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? Just as a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and the two become one flesh, it is the same way the Lord Jesus Christ wants people who are single and married alike to be joined to him to become one spirit. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, and take up his cross expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow me believing in me conforming to my example in living and if need be suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me matthew 16 verse 24 there is no best time to follow the lord than in singleness he that is single cares for the things of the lord how he may please him but he that is married cares for the spouse how he may please them. Singleness is a time to learn how to be selfless. It is a time to learn discipline, to set aside selfish interests and follow the Lord Jesus Christ in truth and in deed. Singleness is a time to conform to Jesus' example of living. You learn how to love your neighbor like Christ loved you. It is self-denial to make a relationship work. Many people are so selfish and self-centered. The kind of love Christ has for us and wants us to show to the world is that kind of a sacrificial love. It is the kind of love that places another person's interest above our own. We must learn to develop morality and personal integrity like Job, regardless of where we find ourselves. Marriage is the joining of two people by God in a lifelong committed relationship. The Pharisees were happy that the law permitted them to divorce. We live in a disposable, cast-off and throw-away society that has largely lost any real sense of permanence. 
Ours is a well of inspiration days, limited shelf life, and plant obsolescence. Truth exists only in the eye of the beholder, and morality is the hymn of the moment. They said to him, Why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? Today, many single people are caught in such kind of trivialities. Instead of them to wait on God and find a relationship that God approves, they spend time shopping one relationship after another. They dangerously play with the hearts of others and dump them in the bin and rush out to start fresh relationships. God wants you as a single person to commit to a cause you are pursuing and not be idle. People look for reasons to avoid committing themselves in relationships. They just want to enter into a relationship with no strings attached. They enter into it and when the trust of that relationship fades, they enter into a whole new adventure. He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. As a single person, you must keep your heart with all diligence because out of it flows the issues of life. A number of singles have already experienced so much heartbreaks. Some of them have hardened their hearts because they didn't take time to develop before meddling with romantic relationships. You need as a single develop the fruits of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruit of the heart you need to have as a single person. Moses permitted divorce because of the hardness of the hearts of men. But God's ideal is for nothing to separate married people. Sexual immorality can separate married people just the same way it separates us from God. We need to keep ourselves clean. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 12, verse 1 to 2, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively change as we mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly virtues and ethical attitudes, so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. And whoever marries her who is divorced commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If such is the case of the man with his wife, it is better not to marry. A lot of people are afraid of lifelong commitment. They just want to use and dispose. They want to treat human beings like the way they treat inanimate things. Let us discuss how to redeem the time in our singlehood. Apostle Paul giving counsel to the Corinthians said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 8, 9, 32, and 35. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. But I want you to be without care. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she who is married cares about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I say for your own profit, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is proper, and that you may serve the Lord without distraction. Singlehood is a time to serve the Lord without distraction. Singlehood is a time you can carry the burden of the Lord. It is a time of deep spiritual focus on God. 
Spend time serving God, your family, and people around you. Commit yourself to holiness of body and spirit. Singlehood is very profiting. Jumping into relationships prematurely is an indication that you don't appreciate this wonderful gift God has given to you. He that is married cares about the things of the world, but he that is single cares about the things of the Lord. Another thing you can do as a single is to grow in your faith. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 9, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence out to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his old sins. For a moment, take stock of your current attitude. Are you so caught up in the dreaming of marriage that you are neglecting your present responsibilities as a son, daughter, brother, sister or friend? Or are you redeeming the time, fulfilling these responsibilities God has given you today? We cannot ignore our current responsibilities and expect to magically gain the strength of character and virtue that will make us good husbands and wives. If we aren't faithful and growing in the relationships we have now, we won't be prepared to pursue faithfulness and growth in marriage later. Someday I want to be a godly husband. I want to nurture my wife, love her, respect her and protect her. How can I train for that? I believe God has given me a mother and sister to practice understanding and honoring women. If I can't love and serve my mother and sister today, what makes me think I will be ready to love and serve a wife in the future? I have to practice now. The reverse is true for girls and their dads and brothers. Girls can view their relationships to the men in their life as training sessions for loving and respecting a future husband. Marriage will transform us into new people. It will only act as a mirror, showing what we already are. We have to practice now what we want to be in the future. Let's look at a few areas we can prepare for while we are still single. Use the gifts and talents God has given to you to improve your home. I pray for you that you will enjoy all the blessings of singlehood in Jesus' name. Why we want to avoid premature intimacy in romantic relationships, we should practice intimacy in other committed relationships, starting with our families. God has given us families to learn the art of sharing life. Practice financial responsibility. Not only do we need to learn to make money and support ourselves, we also need to learn how to manage our money responsibly. Now is the time to learn how to budget safe and tight consistently because we singles don't have as many responsibilities as married folk. We can quickly develop poor habits of spending. We need to make sure we don't develop patterns with money that will jeopardize a marriage or even more important, waste God's resources. I pray God helps us all in Jesus' name. Amen.